Honduras President Xiomara Castro denounced a conspiracy to overdraw and hear the government. The Biden administration will send an additional $250 million in weapons and ammunition to Ukraine as part of its ongoing support of Kiev's counteroffensive. Zimbabwe's main opposition party called for fresh elections after its presidential candidate lost to income Emerson Manangawa. Hello, welcome to From the South. I'm Ana Marrero from the Telesur headquarters in Caracas, Venezuela. We begin with the news. Stay with us. In Honduras, President Simona Castro denounced a conspiracy to withdraw trafficking structures aimed at overdrawing her government. During a popular mobilization in support of her government, the president affirmed that the narco dictatorship that attacked the, attacks the must be defeated and the neoliberal uh, exploitation model with low salaries and high living costs must be defeated. The president also demanded that the National Council elected a new authorities of the Public Prosecutor's Office. In his same line, uh, the head of a state urged unity and resistance so that they do not attack the nation against uh, with uh, a coup d'etat nor violence. Despite our efforts to achieve peace in the Republic and citizens' coexistence, despite my immense tolerance to endure undeserved insults against my status as a woman, leader, and president of the Republic, I'm forced to denounce before the world the conspiracy organized by the mafias and organized crime elites with the structure of drug trafficking to overthrow my government. They want to continue with the larceny. In Argentina, the impeachment commission of the Chamber of Deputies resumes the process against the members of the Supreme Court with the presence of the former Minister of Justice and Security of Porteño, Marcelo de Alessandro. The ex-official Marcelo de Alessandro is accused of influence plotting with Sergio Robles, who was the collaborator of the president of the court, Horacio Rosati. The officialism suspects that Alessandro exchanged messages with Robles about an alleged convenient related to the court's ruling on the, so, on the co-participation and benefited the country of Buenos Aires. The Chilean Interior Ministry reported that one of the seven ex-military personnel convicted for the kidnapping murder of singer-songwriter Victor Jara took his own life after being sentenced for his guilt in the crime. The Eastern Prosecutor's Office confirmed that the suicide of the retired brigadier Hernan Chacon Soto, who the day before was sentenced to 25 years in prison for the murder and kidnapping of the singer and songwriter Victor Jara and Lettere Quiroga, the director of the Gendarmeria during the government of Salvador Allende. The PD ISIS homicide brigade ruled out the involvement of the third parties and verified that the former brigade committed suicide with a weapon registered in his own name. On Tuesday, the president of the Communist Party of Chile, Guillermo Pialier, passed away after health complications. A message from the Communist Party published on the social network X recalled that Pialier support uh, the popular union government of Salvador Allende. Guillermo, a anti fascism fighter against the dictatorship and strategies for the consolidation of a popular and left forces, statements, and the president of the party.
episode of Venezuela on the move, our colleagues Adriana Siboria and Jesus Romero take us to another remote spot in the Venezuelan geography, El Jarillo in the Miranda State. There in the explode of the mountains, local farmers look for new sustainable ways to ensure production while honoring their traditions and heritage. This is the Venezuela that receives and also growth. Lexi. The mountainous landscape opens and gives way to the fog. El Jarillo is one of the villages in the area that stands out from the heights, and the climate is 90 seed 18 degrees. Jose Adrián was 100% dedicated to flowers, but he was seduced by a new love. I am extremely in love with this type of cultivation. Venezuelan coffee is so incredible that every day you find something different, a new flavor, a new texture, a new body, and the sweetness of this coffee. These are specialty coffee beans. The red beans are sweeter than the yellow ones. He does all the work himself in the fields, where he spends hours collecting, then he cleans the harvest beans to finally roast them. His coffee has won the eighth place in international events, and he sells it to local inhabitants. I will not leave Venezuela even if they take me tied up. The neighbor is someone who won't leave either. We follow his steps to his farm, where he was also a floriculturist. However, due to the difficult economic situation, he was forced to change his life. And farming. My grandparents were farmers, and by inheritance, my parents were farmers as well. The farm is a family farm. My wife and my daughter help me, but we also have eight other people who collaborate in the cultivation work. They are looking for excellence, and one of the vegetables they collect is Romanesco broccoli which is a mix with cauliflower, and the interesting thing is that according to experts, they have perfect geometry and they have repeated designs in different sizes. These lands are fertile all year long. Here you can grow anything you plant. El Jarillo is a beautiful place with a wonderful climate. This soil is excellent to work with. This family farm has been growing vegetables and fruits for 30 years, not only outdoors like the typical beaches of the region, but also in the greenhouse where they can control the climate. There you can see strawberries or tomatoes. They have their own irrigation system. The village was founded by Germans about 133 years ago, but is now inhabited by Venezuelans. There are 23 families in the region dedicated to agriculture. Jesús Romero y Arena Sibori, Miranda, Venezuela. Let's take a very first break, but remember you can now join us on our TikTok account as a Lucid English, where you'll be able to see news in different formats, news updates, and more. Stay tuned for more news. Welcome back from the South. In the United States, the Biden administration will send an additional $250 million in weapons and ammunition to Ukraine as part of its ongoing support of Kiev counteroffensive. The weapons will be drawn from ex ex exiting the U.S. stockpiles, officials said on Tuesday, and will include nine cleaning equipment, artillery, and rockets around ambulances uh, and uh, medical uh, grid, among other items and spare parts. Also announced an additional security assistance to meet Ukraine's critical security and defense needs. This announcement is the Biden administration's 45th drawdown of equipment to be provided from DOD inventories to Ukraine since August 2021. It includes additional air defense and artillery munitions, mine clearing equipment, medical vehicles, and other equipment to help Ukraine counter Russia's ongoing war of aggression. The U.S. will continue to work with its allies and partners to provide Ukraine with the capabilities to meet its immediate battlefield needs and longer term security assistance requirements. Tropical storm Idalia became a hurricane on Tuesday and is heading towards Florida Gulf Coast as authorities warn residents in vulnerable areas to back up and leave to escape the threats of high winds and devastating floodings. 
El área es threatening in the Gulf of Mexico that needs a forecast to make Florida and that falls early on Wednesday as a Category 3 system with sustained winds of up to 183 kilometers per hour in the sparkly populated Big Bend region where the Florida rampant jumps into the peninsula. And then uh, pretty much the last eight years that we've been working for this restaurant, uh, it's going to be wiped out and we're not going to have much left after this. But we're, uh, we're just hoping it's going to go through pretty quick. Uh, this is my first one where I'm like really concerned. The other ones, you know, I wasn't really concerned. But this one right towards us, you know, so it makes a little nervous, you know. Kind of stay hopeful. That's about it. UN Director General of the International Atomic Energy Agency, Rafael Grossi, says that Japan's release of dilute with water from the Fukushima nuclear power plant into the Pacific is safe. The statement comes after countries of the area have been criticized uh, Tokyo for the water release, which they consider was uh, done unilaterally and ignoring the strong doubts and opposition of the international community. Japan demands on Tuesday that Japan ensures the safety of the Japanese citizens as its claims a brick that had been thrown at its embassy in Beijing in an escalation role over the release of the Fukushima water. release of the water started uh, last week. The agency has set up a permanent presence there. We have an office in Fukushima now and experts uh, and a laboratory uh, which is making uh, its own, our own uh, independent sampling and so far uh, we have been able to confirm that the first releases of this water do not contain uh, any radionuclei at a level that would be harmful. We can say that it is, and, but we will continue. This is again something about which we cannot have a definitive judgment. Uh, as I like to say, until the last drop is released and it does not contain any um, uh, you know, harmful radionuclide, we will not be able to say, okay, this is all perfect, but the, the beginning has been according to what we were expecting. In Pakistan, where more than 128,000 people have been evacuated from their homes due to the Sutlan River, the highest floods in 35 years. So the high floods so move uh, downstream after causing serious devastation in and around uh, Balpuram city in the Pakistani province of uh, Punjab, the area most affected by the full waters uh, from neighboring India. The waters are now headed to the south of uh, Punyan with a median high flood and a flood risk of a number of districts. Let's take our last break, but before we invite you to visit our YouTube channel at Telesur English, where you'll be able to watch an interview, top stories, special broadcasts, and more. Hit the subscribe button and active the notification bell to stay up to date on the world's most recent events. One financial break, don't go away. Welcome back. On Tuesday, during her meeting with Premier Li Qian in Beijing, the Secretary of Commerce, uh, Gina Raimondo, portrayed that the U.S. does not seek uh, to decouple with China. Welcome in, Raimondo, at the Great Hall of the People on Tuesday afternoon. Li, China's number two, said a healthy trade and economic relationship between the two countries will be beneficial to both sides and the world. Raimondo met with Commerce Minister Wang Wentao a day early and said they'd agreed during a fourth hour meeting to launch an information exchange on export control. Economic and trade relations between China and the United States are mutually beneficial. Politicizing economic and trade issues and exaggerating the concept of security will not only seriously affect bilateral relations and mutual trust, but also undermine the interest of the enterprises and peoples of the two countries and have a disastrous impact on global economy. The U.S. Secretary of Commerce, Gina Raimondo, said that the U.S. government is ready to improve economic and trade ties with the Asian giant. The Biden administration supports China's economic development and improvement of people's livelihoods and has no intention to contain China's development and doesn't seek to disengage from China. 
The United States is willing to maintain communication and normal economic and trade relations with China and promote the continued development of bilateral relations. In this context, Chinese Trade Minister Wang Wentao raised concern about U.S. Uh, tariffs of uh, Chinese goods, its uh, semiconductors policies, restrictions on two-way investments, as well as uh, discriminatory subsidies and uh, sections against Chinese enterprises. On Tuesday, Zimbabwe's main opposition, uh, the Citizens Coalition for Change, called for fresh elections after its presidential candidates lost to incumbent Merson Menengawa in a vote it blesses as both of flaws and illegal. The Citizens Coalition for Change urged the African Union and uh, Southern African Regional Bloc to help mediate a solution to the crisis that followed last uh, Wednesday the vote. The only resolution and way forward articulated by Triple C for avoidance of doubt and confusion is that Zimbabwe needs a fresh and broad and proper election to exit the current crisis. It is clear, it is non-negotiable, that we cannot settle for any leader in Zimbabwe who lacks the true democratic will of the Zimbabwean people. A leader must be born out of a legitimate electoral process, because that is what democracy and election is all about. A rainforest summit held in the Democratic Republic of the Congo urges uh, conservation efforts to address food security for locals. The three-day regional summit opened on Tuesday in the capital city of Kinshasa with the participation of countries of Central Africa and with aim of protecting the region of rainforest. Covering 1.62 million square kilometers, uh, the forests of Central Africa represents uh, the planet's second largest carbon six after the Amazon. The idea for this summit for us as civil society and our partner AFSA is to be able to put in place and make the community, the political decision makers, and the indigenous populations understand how we can reconcile food production and the conservation of biodiversity in the face of the challenges of climate change. We have come to the end of this news brief, but you can find these and many other stories on our website at telesurenglish.net. You can also join us on our socials. We're on Facebook and Twitter and on Instagram as well. For Telesur English, I'm from the South, I'm Ana Marrero. Thank you for watching.